Protecting you and your workplace against the coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, starts with getting the right information. The intent of this course is to provide you with practical guidance from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention (CDC) for cleaning and disinfecting rooms or areas where those with confirmed COVID-19 have visited. There is much to learn about COVID-19. Based on what is currently known about the virus, spread from person to person happens most frequently among close contacts within about six feet. This type of transmission occurs via respiratory droplets. Transmission of the coronavirus to persons from surfaces contaminated with the virus has not been documented at the time this course was published. However, current evidence suggests that the coronavirus may remain viable for hours to days on surfaces made from a variety of materials. Transmission of coronavirus in general occurs much more commonly through respiratory droplets than through objects or materials which are likely to carry infection, such as clothes, utensils, and furniture. Cleaning of visibly dirty surfaces followed by disinfection is a best practice measure for prevention of COVID-19 and other viral respiratory illnesses in community settings. These guidelines are focused on community, non-healthcare facilities such as businesses, offices, schools, institutions of higher education, daycare centers, and community centers that do not house persons overnight. These guidelines are not meant for households or cleaning staff in healthcare facilities or repatriation sites or for others where specific guidance already exists. Any supporting documents referenced throughout this course can be found in the resources section of this course. By the end of this course, you will be able to identify the differences between cleaning and disinfection, identify best practices for cleaning and disinfecting, identify PPE and hand hygiene best practices. Community facilities such as businesses, schools, and daycare centers comprise most non-healthcare settings that are visited by the general public outside of a household. Cleaning refers to the removal of dirt and impurities, including germs, from surfaces. Cleaning alone does not kill germs, but by removing germs, it decreases their number and therefore any risk of spreading infection. Disinfecting works by using chemicals to kill germs on surfaces. This process does not necessarily clean dirty surfaces or remove germs, but killing germs remaining on a surface after cleaning further reduces any risk of spreading infection. It is recommended to close off areas used by ill persons and wait as long as practical before beginning cleaning and disinfection to minimize potential for exposure to respiratory droplets. Open outside doors and windows to increase air circulation in the area. If possible, wait up to 24 hours before beginning cleaning and disinfection. Cleaning staff should clean and disinfect all areas, such as offices, bathrooms, and common areas used by the ill persons, focusing especially on frequently touched surfaces. If surfaces are dirty, they should be cleaned using a detergent or soap and water prior to disinfection. For disinfection, diluted household bleach solutions, alcohol solutions with at least 70% alcohol, and most common EPA-registered household disinfectants should be effective. Diluted household bleach solutions can be used if appropriate for the surface. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for application and proper ventilation. Check to ensure the product is not past its expiration date. Never mix household bleach with ammonia or any other cleanser. Unexpired household bleach will be effective against coronaviruses when properly diluted. Bleach solutions can be prepared by mixing five tablespoons or one third cup of bleach per gallon of water or four teaspoons bleach per quart of water. Products with EPA-approved emerging viral pathogens are expected to be effective against COVID-19 based on data for harder to kill viruses. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for all cleaning and disinfection products, such as concentration, application method, and contact time, etc. For soft, porous surfaces, such as carpeted floor, rugs, and drapes, remove visible contamination if present and clean with the appropriate cleaners indicated for use on these surfaces. If the items can be laundered, launder items in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions using the warmest appropriate water setting for the items and then dry items completely. Dirty laundry that has been in contact with an ill person can be washed with other people's items. Do not shake dirty laundry. This minimizes the possibility of dispersing virus through the air. Remember to clean and disinfect hampers or other carts for transporting laundry. 
cleaning staff should wear disposable gloves and gowns for all tasks in the cleaning process, including handling trash. Gloves and gowns should be compatible with the disinfectant products being used. Additional PPE might be required based on the cleaning, disinfectant products being used and whether there is a risk of splash. Gloves and gowns should be removed carefully to avoid contamination of the wearer in the surrounding area. Gloves should be removed after cleaning a room or area occupied by ill persons. Clean hands immediately after gloves are removed. Cleaning staff should immediately report breaches in PPE, such as tears in gloves, or any potential exposures to their supervisor. Cleaning staff and others should clean hands often, including immediately after removing gloves and after contact with an ill person by washing hands with soap and water for 20 seconds. If soap and water are not available and hands are not visibly dirty, an alcohol-based hand sanitizer that contains 60 to 95% alcohol may be used. However, if hands are visibly dirty, always wash hands with soap and water. Follow normal preventive actions while at work and home, including cleaning hands and avoiding touching eyes, nose, or mouth with unwashed hands. Additional key times to clean hands include after blowing one's nose, coughing or sneezing, after using the restroom, before eating or preparing food, after contact with animals or pets, before and after providing routine care for another person who needs assistance, such as a child. Employers should work with their local and state health departments to ensure appropriate local protocols and guidelines, such as updated additional guidance for cleaning and disinfection, are followed, including identification of new potential cases of COVID-19. Employers should educate staff and workers performing cleaning, laundry, and trash pickup activities to recognize the symptoms of COVID-19 and provide instructions on what to do if they develop symptoms within 14 days after their last possible exposure to the virus. At a minimum, any staff should immediately notify their supervisor and the local health department if they develop symptoms of COVID-19. The health department will provide guidance on what actions need to be taken. When working with your local health department, check their available hours. Employers should develop policies for worker protection and provide training to all cleaning staff on site prior to providing cleaning tasks. Training should include when to use PPE, what PPE is necessary, how to properly put it on, use, and take off PPE, and how to properly dispose of PPE. Employers must ensure workers are trained on the hazards of cleaning chemicals used in the workplace in accordance with OSHA's hazard communication standard. Employers must comply with OSHA's standards on bloodborne pathogens, including proper disposal of regulated waste and PPE. The coronavirus should be taken seriously. By ensuring that you understand actions you should take to clean and disinfect locations of those with suspected or confirmed COVID-19 have visited, you are taking actions to keep you, your household, and your workplace safe.